Hello everyone! Welcome to this video. My name is Julia. I'm an entrepreneur, a Delta holder and a passionate instructional designer. In this video, we are going to talk about how to do well in Delta Module 1, Paper 2, Task 3. In this video, I'm going to share with you the list of topics that you need to scrutinize and understand how to respond to those and some recommendations from Cambridge. Are you ready? Let's get started. All right, so let's have a look at the topics which you can encounter in paper two, task three. First of all, it can be something related to language one, the first language in the classroom and the use of it. PPP versus TTT lesson shapes. PPP stands for presentation practice and production and TTT test teach test. Mentioning your experience will definitely be a good option if you cannot easily or quickly end up with some particular rationale which includes some references to some particular well-known names. All right, then we have another topic which is error correction and there is a lot to say there. Drilling, both theory and practices and what are the pros and cons, teaching grammar, text reconstruction, dictogloss and pros and cons of that, teaching listening, selection of language items, kinds of lexis, teacher talking time, listening to and producing natural speech. You can see some name over here, so we'll talk about it a little bit later. Writing in the syllabus, what is the role of writing in the syllabus in particular? Ways of teaching pronunciation, PPP lesson shape, as I mentioned before, so PPP can be a separate standing question. TDT can be also an option which can be the question, a separate standing question which you need to elaborate on with providing pros and cons and obviously the rationale behind your answer. Extensive reading, a really good topic and a lot of reading on extensive reading. And in some of my sessions, I mention extensive reading. By the way, right now I'm currently working on the course, which is Delta Fast Track. And this course will help people who want to brush up on everything to feel more confident to use some particular phrases which can lead you to more consistent responses. In the nearest future, there will be some updates on that. And also you will be able to see some more details on my website. So you will not miss anything. All right, let's continue further. Graded readers, pros and cons of graded readers and what is the use. Uses of translation, phonemic script, reading aloud, advantages and disadvantages of using minimal interventions, advantages and disadvantages of authentic texts, reasons for and against teaching idioms, and pros and cons of drilling. So these are not only are the topics that will be covered. If you walk through all of them, you will be, let's say, 95% prepared for paper two task three, and you will be able to elaborate on your answer by providing reasonable rationale behind it. And now let's have a look at what is advice from Cambridge in this regard. Please read the rubric carefully, because depending on it, you will be able to elaborate on the right topic. Consider the question from the viewpoints of the learners, the teachers, instructional requirements, materials, you name it in order to have a greater range of ideas. Usually, when teachers step into module one exam, they tend to think in the perspective of their teaching techniques, approaches, and uh, the issues that they do have. But it would be also nice to recognize yourself in the shoes of the learner and think which issues might be there and reflect it will be easier for you to answer the question. Especially if you don't have a lot of teaching hours, it might be quite a challenge to respond to such kind of questions. In this case, you can benefit from different perspectives and obviously there will be more things to mention. Another piece of advice from Cambridge would be to make as many relevant points as you can and you can aim for 15 so that you can also provide reasonable rationale behind your answers. Another recommendation is to develop the points made, supporting them with rationale based on relevant references to one or more of the following. So you can name specific examples from your own experience. You can refer to the examples from a range of contexts and also you can refer to sources and some uh, well-known names in ELT. 
One more reasonable suggestion from Cambridge is to prepare for this task by reading a methodology book which covers a range of topics. Here you have learning teaching by Scrivener or the practice of English language teaching by Hammer, techniques and principles in language teaching, Larson and Freeman. I'm personally a big fan of this book and it helped a lot of colleagues of mine to prepare for the exam. And another preference of mine is key issues in language teaching by Richards. Undoubtedly, all these books are worth reading. However, it depends on how much time you have. When you step into the exam room, Time flies so quickly that you can't even imagine. So for this particular reason, I ask you to allow yourself enough time for both parts of the task. It may happen that you can't end up with the rationale immediately. Please do not waste your precious time. It may happen that this aha moment will come to you in the middle of writing another point for this question. And you can come back to this question again a little bit later when you have the answer. The last but not the least, what I would like to mention in this video would be the depth. Why I would like to mention probably those people who have already watched some of my previous videos, you already know that I talk a lot about the depth. The depth can help you gain more marks for this assignment. You can receive a rating between 0 to 5 for the overall response. And ratings for the depths are doubled to a maximum of 10 marks. So isn't it amazing that you can double your mark just by providing the depths and how to provide the depths? The depths criteria is the development, the rationale and the reference. I mentioned reference many times in this video and not only. Reference really matters. Mention the reference to either your experience, to approaches in methodology, to issues in ELT. Have a look at some key points that can help you cover the topics that I've mentioned in this video. If you would like to save up some time, I invite you to my Delta Module 1 course where you will have a chance to have a fast track over the whole exam with tips and tricks and best practices that helped me to pass the exam and also helped other colleagues of mine to do well in the exam. It's a good option if you don't have enough time to scrutinize all those books and materials on your own and your exam is just around the corner. All right, that's everything for this video and in my upcoming videos I will show you the exact way how you are expected to respond to this question and provide the rationale behind your answer. If you like this video, press like and subscribe to my channel if you would like to receive more videos like this. I wish you good luck in your exam and see you in my upcoming video. Bye!